Hello everyone, I'm here at Cave Comics in Newtown, Connecticut with Jerry Ordway. Jerry, how's it going today? Uh, really good, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so, a few weekends ago we had Terrificon. How's uh, Terrificon for you this year? It's always fun. I really find that I'm amazed that people still have comics for me to sign because uh, a lot of stuff that I've signed over 30 some years, I keep thinking I've signed every possible book that came out. Um, but there's there's still more. It was fun. It's very busy. It's a it's the type of show where there's a lot of activity and for most creators, I think it's the fun part of it is after the show and then you can kind of reconnect with people, which I did get to do, which was kind of what makes the show. <coughs> Definitely. Um, you also were part of a few panels. Uh, one being the reuniting the crisis of the everyone or most people involved in crisis on Infinite Earth. So was it like being part of that panel and uh, talking with uh, fellow creators? Um, I hadn't, well, I mean, I hadn't seen Mike DiCarlo in a few years. Uh, I hadn't been on a panel with Marv Wolfman probably since crisis times, or maybe when we first relaunched uh, Superman, that was probably the last time. So, I mean, that was kind of cool. I mean, it's always nice when people can get together. You get a sense of, uh, you know, the fact that we're still out there and we're still working, you know. Definitely. Um, looking back, uh, we just celebrated uh, Jack Kirby's 100th birthday. Uh, you were... Uh, Asked for a few words on, I think, comicbook.com. Um, talk about uh, Jack Kirby and how he uh, influenced you. Um, I came, kind of came around to Kirby. Like, uh, There's a couple of fellow professionals who had the same experience where they kind of didn't initially like the Kirby's art style, but then kind of grew to like it or understand it a little more. I mean, my first influences probably were, I would have to say, John Romita on... Spider-Man and uh, Gene Colan on Daredevil. Those were the first books I remember picking up off the newsstands and, and going, wow, these, this is amazing. And Kirby was very different from that. Um, I actually wound up being, becoming, I like Captain America and I like Kirby's Captain America and that, that was like six, 1967 around there. I really got into Kirby much more, weirdly enough, after he left DC. I mean, after he left Marvel for DC, that was that was kind of my uh, intro with the the Jimmy Olsen. Yeah. We're seeing a Jimmy Olsen comic. It's you know it said the King is here or something or Kirby is here, and it was like, oh wow, this is crazy. I, I remember buying it and thinking, that, you know, it blew my mind because <laughs> I would never have imagined buying a Jimmy Olsen comic because <laughs> I was I was just a hardcore Marvel fan. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, he, I got to know him a little bit just as most people did through going to the San Diego Comic Con and there was one year and I think it was 84 that he came to the Chicago Comic Con which was kind of my home show when I was living in, in Milwaukee um, and it was nice to you know actually have dinner we, we had two dinners with him as part of you know group things with DC people and and heard his you know his stories because he was he's always telling stories so I mean we heard his growing up stories and about gangsters and and uh you know his his advice that his mother had, uh, had given him when he was like 14 15 was and just funny it was like never get involved with a mall and we we're like <laughs> what'd you say he said mall you know a gangster's gr gr girlfriend <laughs> and like oh okay <laughs> that's interesting my mom never told me that <laughs> but uh but yeah he was he, he was a, a pretty neat guy i mean he was very accessible i mean he's the influence directly influence is just seeing how nice he was to everybody mm -hmm. Uh, he he didn't have any uh, he didn't put on airs or anything. He was friendly to, you know, Jeanette Kahn, who was publisher of DC at the time. But he was just equally friendly to, you know, I mean, I was a nobody. I was just a young kid. But it, the fans coming up to him, he was always very gracious with his time. And that th the lesson for me is that's what you really, you know, you represent yourself. And uh, it's easy in his case. You could see he was a genuinely nice person. You know. Awesome. Um. Looking at today's comics, have you noticed any uh, differences or similarities from when you were drawing comics, or even you know throughout you know seventies, eighties, as well? You mean like the style changes and things? Yeah, I mean uh, to me, everything. Well, I mean like the world around us. There's much more noise. Mm -hmm. I think of that as uh, I think the the dr level of drawing is pretty amazing across the board, but in a way, it's almost too. A lot of it is too detailed, mm -hmm. or more detailed than it needs to be. And that's not a value judgment on somebody's work. It just it feels like, just like with computer coloring, you have a choice of millions of tones as opposed to the old days when you had 64 colors to work with with flat coloring. And, uh, you know, your TV channel got 12 channels instead of 
200 or whatever. I mean, there's just so much more of everything. I mean, it seems like the, that that's the big difference is, is stuff is a lot more busy. A lot of um, uh, stories have to have way too many le levels. And sometimes simplicity is good too. I'm not, I'm not putting down new stuff. I still come to cave every week and I still pick up books. So uh, uh, I'm not against any of this. I think, like I said, the, the level of talent is pretty amazing, I think. And um, I was wondering if you could tell me, when you're drawing a character, what part of the character do you uh, tend to draw first? I, I'm a scribbler, so <laughs> when I draw something, I, I scribble. I'll try to scribble a pose, but I almost invariably start in and do much too much detail on the head, because that's probably where my interest mostly lies. <laughs> um, but then I wind up having to redraw it because the figure doesn't match it, or you know, I need to move the head over or something. Um, I've just always been terrible as far as just planning things out. I just I like to scribble and find a figure within the scribbles and refine it. Um, but I, I always like drawing faces. I like uh, drawing expressions, and I enjoy drawing different uh, kinds of faces. And um, I think that's what my focus was always in drawing comics. I was like always trying to have these characters act, mm -hmm. and in comics they overact. <laughs> just like on stage, you have to be you have to project a bigger you know, performance to reach the seats at the back, comics being limited to a two-dimensional, you know, plane, you, you tend to, if someone d gets mad, they get mad with a big, <laughs> you know, or a big yell. They don't just get mad s silently. <laughs> you can do that, but generally you overact with characters. And that's the, the fun part of doing comics is the, the just actually telling the story and, and how characters interact with each other. Awesome, Jerry. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. <laughs>